It's the Retro Station 1989 Holiday Special. With special guest Tamara Chambers as Cynthia, the Good Game Fairy. Featuring Margot as herself. With Cambot Jr. and special guest by way of appearance from the poop deck, Splat. Now, get ready for your host with the most, the man with the plan in space above Earth, the one and only Commander Dan and the Retro Station 1989 Holiday Special. And so the manager says to him, if that's the suppository, where's Santa's hat? Processing. Processing. Get it? I am sorry, Commander Dan. Humor is lost on me. It's fine. Did you integrate that info cluster I sent you about Christmas yet? Oh, yes, Commander Dan. The celebration, the festive lighting, the reason for the season. But there's one element that truly astonishes me. Oh, the whole savior of mankind thing? No, Commander Dan. Fruitcake. It is glorious. Really? <laughs> wow, you and Splat have something in common. Impossible. Seriously, you both want to know the joys of fruitcake. Do you know what this means? That Splat isn't completely ignorant or insane, of course. Fruitcake is delightful. I'm aware of its charms, Commander. Right. I keep forgetting. You're pure intellect, so if you can understand it, intellectually, you understand it completely. So you know the uh, joys of fruitcake, but what about Splat? I do not include worthless variables in my calculations. Margo, it's Christmas. Didn't any of the... Integrated data I sent? Didn't you watch it? Didn't you take it in? Audible sigh. Of course I did. Every scenario presented includes an adversarial relationship that softens to a cordial one for the sake of the holiday. Splat's affinity for fruitcake is somewhat tragic, though. What do you mean? Splat is a very simple holographic modification, and while three-dimensional, isn't very complex. I don't think he really can taste anything. Really? And wanting to be a real boy? Jeez, what a whack wish that is. Be a man. Men are better. We're strong. We're, we smell good sometimes. We can lift heavy stuff and open jars. Uh, and not for nothing, we build a lot of stuff. We design things, too. I mean, we're pretty cool. As you say, but I'm afraid so, Commander. Man or boy, Splat as he is, isn't capable of tasting things. Our next evaluation is ready in the retro station virtual media gantry. You're right. Thanks, Margo. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Retro Station 1989. Of course, this is the holiday special, and we're continuing here. See, we had a list of requests from Planet X, you know, our sponsors, but... Man, those are some real difficult games to evaluate. So, I made a wish, you saw, and we've got bigger problems than that, though. See, my little buddy Splat wants Christmas, and by Mario's mustache, I'm going to try and give him exactly that. Cynthia! Good game, fairy. I'm ready for my second wish. Oh, no, not so loud. I may have gotten mixed up with some farmers from Stardew Valley who fermented some magic beans that they found near the radioactive runoff. <laughs> Hell of a buzz! But this hangover has me feeling like Donkey Kong trying to read. I don't follow. He's illiterate. Christ, dude, I don't have time for this, okay? Donkey Kong can't read. Makes him sad when he has to admit it to people. I'm hella toxic hungover right now, kind of sad. And your dopey wishes is not making it any better. Illiterate? But he wears a tie. Out with the wish already! Oh my god. 
I, I'm just saying. It makes him seem so professional, you know? Like, you'd have to go to college if you weren't a tie. I right? want to be a real boy! So loud. Grant me a wish, kid. And how about you shut the fuck up for a second, okay? I don't do that. Besides, you don't want to be a boy. Boys are gross. Men are better. Marginally. See? This is what I was telling you. And anyway, Splash, you'll come to realize that all of those wishes are lame sauce, okay? They all have to do with, well, <clears throat> you were always brave, a real boy, a strong female leader of your people. My personal favorite, your shoes were magic all along and they could take you home. Oh, the, the monstrous moose bed in which removing all those heads and furs of Bob represents your desire to date ladies. So here, it's basically the gist of all of those. Wish granted! Oh. Oh, yeah! Good idea! Well, don't worry, Splat. I'm gonna make sure that even if Santa doesn't make it here, you will have a Christmas, little buddy. The Retro Station 1989 Holiday Special will be right back after these messages from our sponsors at... Opening now at Sears, a Christmas of red ribbon values, including Sears' best-selling video game, Video Arcade. On sale now for only $134.99, our lowest price ever. And don't miss the full assortment of game cartridges available at everyday low prices. Or try your hand at Sears' wide selection of one- and two-player handheld sports games. Our everyday low price is $12 to $13 lower than last Christmas. To wrap up a beautiful Christmas, you can count on Sears. Margo, make it so. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. Indeed, Commander. Well, continuing our month of Disney evaluations, this is another one that I, I really like, but it has more to do with my second line as an illustrator and my obsession with the eternal question, what does it mean to be alive? Kambot, spool up the footage and let's dive into this week's evaluation. It's 1940, and the world is in a state of turmoil. German ambitions to conquer Europe are ticking along at an alarming pace. Strife, war, and conflict have touched everywhere you can point a stick at on a map of the world. But not in America. Our country had survived the Great Depression through the combined efforts of the political system, everyone linking arms and working together, and an eye toward being less fearful of the unknown and more mindful of the prospects and opportunities of tomorrow. Look, politics sucks. I hate political discussion but only because political considerations are the only ones anyone seem to calculate when it comes to policy and what's best for everyone, and it seems like that's the only desire for the haves to keep burying the have-nots. But the political atmosphere of 1940 is important to explain why we were experiencing such affluence. And the rest of the world was aflame with conflict and, and poverty. First, Woodrow Wilson and the follow-on presidents adhered to Wilson's concept of moral diplomacy, which is to say we only offered aid to countries morally aligned with the goals of the United States of America. This kept us out of most of the major wars and conflicts of the later part of the 30s, and once we were pulled out of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl, we figured doing anything but providing aid would be the smartest course of action to prevent us from overspending or pushing ourselves back to a Great Depression. But that led us to an isolationist policy, and isolationism led to a very prosperous era in America in our entertainment, music, theater, and cinema, all were on fire, especially color films with sound. One of our chief exports was Cinematic Wonder, and one of our chief manufacturers of Wonder, Walter Elias Disney. So, after Snow White and Disney's pioneering of sound film, Hollywood was entering its golden era. And while people being mesmerized by what they saw on screen as real or affecting in a way that we in the present would consider pretty quaint, Disney decided to make a screen-filling epic that would entertain young and old alike. And it was more than just a cartoon. Honestly, it was a paradigm shift. February 1940, and moviegoers were excited for the next Marvel Disney would attempt to achieve with his Pinocchio adaptation. And what appeared on the screen was no less than that, a Marvel. Color animation went from being that thing used to entertain folks before the movie, but after the trailers, to winning two Academy Awards. And to be a box office bomb, because the Asian and European markets were closed off to American studios due to the war. The story follows an old toy maker, Geppetto, who wants a son and creates for himself a kid in Pinocchio, a wooden marionette. Lifeless, but lifelike. Geppetto wishes upon a star in the Blue Fairy, after doing a couple checks with CPS and the local authorities because, you know, there's a fine line between Geppetto and Geppetto, if you know what I mean, folks. 
Anyway, the Blue Fairy teaches old Geppetto the difference between living and animated by bringing the marionette to life and giving it a soul. Yes, an eternal living hell trapped inside a wooden carcass. Unless, Pinocchio can fulfill three virtues, being truthful, brave, and unselfish. Kind of sounds like fairies are dicks sometimes, with their ironic twists and narrative-driving blessings with a curse. Ah, fooey. But not you, Cynthia, you rule. So anyway, Pinocchio has a bunch of adventures, and while I joke about the story as translated, it's actually a good little children's adventure. Pinocchio is kidnapped by a fat dude named Stromboli, is taken down the wrong path via peer pressure, and almost sold into slavery as a donkey going to the, get this, the effing salt mines. And then, in a sequence that is thrilling and damn near traumatic for some kids, Monstro, a quote-unquote whale that is as murderous as any shark or flying piranha has ever been on screen, devours both Geppetto and Pinocchio. Pinocchio and Geppetto escape Monstro and wash up on the shore after. And Geppetto, he ain't doing so good. So Pinocchio begs for Geppetto's life, offering up his own to save his foster father figure. But his bravery, truthfulness, and finally his selfless act causes the Blue Fairy to return for him and rescues Geppetto and makes him a real live boy. Happily ever after? Sounds like it. The story's a classic. The animation version is epic, and hey... We even did a version of When You Wish Upon a Star in our, in our last segment, and it's even the theme to, that Disney uses in their production bumpers. Pinocchio is historic, and it holds a dear spot in the hearts of Disney fans. The Retro Station 1989 Holiday Special will be right back after these messages from our sponsors at... beer than Michelob for the holiday season. Special enough to make the right impression, friendly enough to show you care. No wonder Michelob has become a holiday tradition. Holidays were made for Michelob. Yeah. Baking holiday cookies has always been a family tradition at our house. It's easy with Pillsbury sugar cookies. I just slice, shape, and bake. And the cookies come out hot and fresh. And Jim and the kids do the decorating. <laughs> How about a, a green Santa Claus? Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Home-baked holiday cookies from Pillsbury. Look for the free holiday crafts book right in the package. Hey, boss. So I've been reading this Pinocchio book, and I think it's got the right idea. I I'm just going to be brave, selfless, and truthful. Maybe by doing that, I can get on Santa's radar, huh? Well, buddy, let me tell you this. If Santa doesn't put you on the nice list, I'll have a long talk with him. I'm going to get this evaluation off to the sponsors, and then we're going to see what we can do about Christmas for you, buddy boy. Don't you worry about that. Well, gee, thanks, Commander Dan. No problem, Splat. It's Christmas. Everybody deserves a little Christmas. Cambot, let's fire this up and get this evaluation in the books. Pinocchio for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System by, well, Disney Interactive and Virgin Media. Let's take a look. Disney's had some successes and failures when it comes to translating their animated films to the small screen in video game format. Pinocchio is kind of a special case. It was the last game published by Virgin Interactive in association with Disney Studios. Virgin created a couple games with Disney, and they were successful for the most part. Lion King... Jungle Book, and a particular triumph was Aladdin for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, the first of the two's collaborations. But the last of the four ended up being less supervised by the Disney artists, and while the animation is on par with the other Virgin titles, the gameplay is, well, a little... Well, let's see for yourself. Pinocchio, the game, is broken up over nine levels, both on the Mega Drive and Genesis and Super Nintendo. They follow the movie pretty closely. The first level is An Actor's Life for Me, where Pinocchio must fend off Honest John and Gideon and go to school instead of following them to Easy Street. If you manage to do that, you get one of the badges that you need to finish the game. Trust me, those are important. Get those badges. Why is all these buttons and badges with Disney? I don't know. Anyway, in the second level, you play as Jiminy Cricket with a different move scheme, which kind of makes it difficult to control, so without the manual for this game, you might be up a creek. Once you've defeated the moths on that level and got your seat for the show, it's on to level 3. Which is pretty fun. It's I've Got No Strings. Actually, it's a rhythm game where you play as Pinocchio on a stage performing I've Got No Strings to Hold Me Down, and it's a very bright spot in a fairly muddled game. After the third level, you escape Stromboli's puppet show and follow Lampwick to Pleasure Island. 
Then, once Pinocchio realizes that these are very bad kids, and, oh, crap, are they turning into donkeys? Eh, we need to get the hell out of here. Pinocchio attempts to escape, and Lampwick and crew chase him down. Remember, if he turns into a donkey, he's getting sold into slavery in the salt mines. And over the third and fourth level, Pinocchio works on escaping Pleasure Island until he sees Geppetto out in the ocean looking for Pinocchio and gets swallowed by Monstro. And then Pinocchio spends the next two levels searching for Monstro under the sea. And wouldn't you know it, level eight takes place inside Monstro. I mean, because clearly Pinocchio found Monstro and exactly what you'd expect when a puppet fights a monster whale, well, that's exactly what happened. He was eaten. In level 9, a great level, graphics and all, you're escaping from Monstro. Geppetto and Pinocchio rage against the seas and a killer whale. And do they live happily ever after? Well, that's a good question. But it's not the only question, nor the most important question, of course, which is... So, we're left with, does Pinocchio, for the SNES, have a license to play? It's by Virgin Interactive and Disney Media. I tell you what. Sure. Actually, yeah. The game is hard to play. Trust me, it is. But it's worth it. I mean, get a couple sodas, a couple pizzas, knuckle down your retro skills, get a couple friends to mock it a little bit, and you'll have a great time. I mean, the graphics are great, the music is okay, but the action, when you get to the dance stage and a little bit after that, it's a little bit fun. But be sure to read the manual. You're going to need a manual for this one. And Splat, I have a great idea for your Christmas that's going to change your life. Excellent. All right, everybody. Stay tuned, we've got more to come, and oh wow, well, we've got to go to our message from our sponsors, but thanks again for showing up and checking out the holiday special. And, what do we say around here? Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll see you in a minute. Oh, I get it. Santa's hat is in the anus of the reindeer. Very funny. Genuine hearty laugh. Yeah! 